Explore the history, relationships, expertise, and data that go into ensuring Stein growers get maximum yield potential. This is the Stein Seedcast. Here's your host, David Thompson. Hello, and welcome to the Stein Seedcast. I'm your host, David Thompson, National Marketing and Sales Director for Stein Seed Company. We've got another great episode lined up with special guests, expert insights, and discussion on everything you need to know about maximizing yield potential. On today's episode, our very special guest is Jay Stroh, Seed Treatment Key Account Manager for Allbaugh. Welcome to the show, Jay. Oh, thank you. Glad to be here. Allbaugh is the largest privately held supplier of post-patent crop protection products in the world with an ever-expanding portfolio of core crop protection products, seed treatment platform, and the prime source line of specialty products. Stein works closely with Allbaugh on our proprietary line of XP seed treatment offerings, and we're excited to have Jay on the show today to discuss XP seed treatment and overall trends in the seed treatment arena. Jay, just to get us started, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. I was uh, born and raised in a farm in southeastern North Dakota. So from there, I received my bachelor's from uh, North Dakota State University in agriculture extension and um, also minors in entomology, plant pathology, and agronomy. So really a broad education there and, of course, with seed treatment that fits really well what I'm doing today. I started my career uh, in North Dakota with a seed company and I worked as a district sales manager, also regional agronomist really for North Dakota, Minnesota, and at that time, I was actually doing some trials with seed treatment. And so from there, I moved into one of the multinational companies and uh, was with them about eight years delivering seed treatment products and helping getting seed dealers set up and treaters. And from there, I've been with Alba for 10 years. So I've been in the seed treatment business for uh, 18 years. So you ended up with Alba. We talked a little bit in the intro about, about this company. Talk, talk about Alba and what they do in the industry. Yeah, so Alba is a family-owned business. Uh, it was founded in 1979 by Dennis Alba, farmer in Ankeny, Iowa. Uh, he started, uh, you know, in a one-truck operation, and, and now is a global enterprise. Uh, you know, when Dennis started the company, it was all about high-quality products, great service with competitive prices, and that's where our tagline "Your Alternative" comes from. And uh, you know, even as a global company today. Alba still holds true to Dennis's founding values. Our manufacturing is done in the heart of the country, in uh, St. Joseph, Missouri. So you've got a lot of experiences, Sea Dream business, and I think in the last 18 years, there's been kind of a lot of, a lot of evolution. Yeah, exactly. It was probably about 12 years ago that they decided that they wanted to expand into seed treatments. And so um, I came and joined the company then about 10 years ago, and at that time, then we were, you know, really looking at the potential seed treatment products that were available and, uh, you know, getting those products in our portfolio and expanding into biologicals and, and other products as we grew the seed treatment business. So talking about seed treatments, I think there's obviously a lot of different things going on in the seed treatment arena. So when we talk in generalities about seed treatment, I think there's several different buckets of, you know, the seed treatment fits in. So if you would kind of break down what those different parameters are, or what those different types of seed treatments are that we, that you tend to see used. Sure. Yeah. So of course, I think, uh, you know, growers, they probably think first off of, you know, really seed treatments is really all about, you know, fungicides and insecticides, right? But obviously there's nematicides, uh, nutritional products, and there's a lot of buzz out there t- today about, you know, really the biologicals. And one thing I think that really need to understand is that seed treatments don't necessarily just increase your yields. We're helping, for example, the Stein genetics of maintaining that yield potential. I understand the world record today on soybeans is 190 bushel. Well, not every grower probably is going to try to achieve 190, but, you know, that 100 bushel potential is probably there, right? So, of course, when a grower plants, you know, in that case, let's say soybeans, um, as soon as you plant that seed, your yield potential because of diseases, insects, you know, nematodes that are affecting that seed and seedling and early plant growth, of course, your yield potential just keeps dropping. So that's where seed treatments come in is, is protecting that seedling and seed. So then the plant itself can build up immunity too and protect that you know, plant early on, but then as a plant gets established, it, it can protect itself more 
as it uh, develops. And uh, so, yeah, so it's all about protecting that yield potential more so. And I guess, obviously, it depends on the situation you're in. But like you said, fungicides are kind of the the low-hanging fruit. Most places, certainly in the soybean realm, most places you go, there are different fungal diseases. But uh, some years are better than others. But at the same time, almost everywhere, you're you're battling something at some point. That's right. You know, and it doesn't matter really probably what crop uh, growers are, you know, uh, planting. There's really three big, you know, diseases out there, and it's really Pythium, Rhizoctonia, and Fusarium. You'll see that in most all crops. And when you think about some of these diseases, we talk about some of these are nibblers, meaning like Rhizoctonia, a lot of time Rhizoctonia will affect your, your, your root system and coleoptile and so on and infect the plant, but it won't necessarily kill it. It'll be there and, and kind of chewing away and, and, of course, reducing your root mass. And, of course, then you got less nutrients coming in, less water. So, again, that's more of a nibbler, we call it. And then the other piece of it is, is look at uh, a lot of these diseases are also killers. And when you look at that, one prime one is like pythium. Uh, pythium, again, is, affects multiple crops. And when you plant that seedling, you know, with pythium infecting that seedling and seed, that'll just kill the seedling and seed. So from there, your stand count is already lowered, right? So now already your, your yield potential just keeps coming down because you lost some plants. So those key diseases, it's all about protecting those. But you also got to look at each crop too, of course. So like soybeans, besides those big three, we also have white mold, SDS, Phytophthora, you know, the list goes on, right? So depending on what's out there, I got to make sure your seed dealer or seed company is putting on the products that are protecting you for those issues if you have them in your particular area or in your field. Yeah, so kind of what you just said, I, I you know, I, I would assume that the place to start when a grower is trying to make decisions on seed treatment is prior history is probably a good predictor of future <laughs> occurrence. So if you've had problems in the past with a certain disease complex, that's probably the place to start and say, well, we ought to make sure we have protection against, you know, that particular fungal disease. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, I think, you know, take a look at Phytophthora. We know some, you know, areas of the United States, like the Red River, Red River Valley of North Dakota, Minnesota, is really prone to a lot of Phytophthora. Ohio has a really hot spot of, you know, Phytophthora. Now, Phytophthora is in other areas also, but, you know, understanding that if it's in that area, but also in your own field, that, okay, when I, before I plant this soybean seed, I got to make sure I got the right product on there as a, you know, as a seed treatment to protect me from Phytophthora along with the other diseases. So that's just that example. So fungicides is one s- segment of that. Obviously, insecticide is, is is another component that we see a lot of times added into the treatment complex, right? Right. And when you look at insecticides, of course, some of the common ones are the neonicotinoids, and those are systemic throughout the plant and early season. So when you look at insects, of course, you got the subsoil pests, you got the seed core maggot, you got wire worms that are, you know, eating away in the roots and the seedling. And then you also, you know, early and, and even later on, you get some soybean aphids or other aphids in wheat, for example, thrips, you know, another subsoil pest is corn rootworm. So that's where the insecticides come into play. And again, one thing about insecticides is there is different rates based on the pests that you're targeting. So again, as you talked about knowing your you know field and what the issues are, you know if you've got a history of corn rootworm, you want to make sure that you probably have a good robust rate of insecticide, along with of course good genetics that have some of the trait packages. So it's a good IPM approach, making sure you've got the genetics along with the seed treatment. To, in this case, protecting like corn rootworm. I guess I would assume that different pests come into play at different times of the year. And so that also is an issue when you look at what type of insecticide you're going to be using is when is that pest going to be attacking the plant? Yeah, exactly. I mean, if it's, uh, if you have some pests that, you know, it's later season, of course, uh, seed treatments probably aren't going to be there for you, right? So then it's more of a foliar application of, of an insecticide. So you're right. And there is some other new insecticides that are 
uh, being used as seed treatments also. And I'll, I'll talk about one of those that we have as a biological in a little bit. The other thing about insects is you, you got to think about is that, so let's say you got a wireworm that's, uh, you know, chewing away in some of the root system. That's also an infection point, right? So, you know, it's once you have that infection point, then of course there's another spot for diseases to enter and, and it's, so it's a kind of complex of issues that can happen. Yeah, so insects and, and diseases tend to be a symbiotic relationship, <laughs> it seems like. You mentioned biologicals, so we're going to get into that here in a second, but I guess the other component independent of that would be kind of the colorant polymer is probably a key component in most seed treatments. Is that fair? Yes, and of course the colorant, the main reason we're putting color on the seed is that you know it just has to be treated an unnatural color. And the reason for that is so we don't, you know, get that back into the food system, right? So, but of course, from there, it's gotten to, be, gotten to be that some of the seed is really looking really beautiful with some of the different colorants and really robust. And the polymer also helps you on some other fronts as far as seed flow, uh, you know, keeping the active ingredients on the seed where they belong. Also the appearance, right? So that's really the purpose of those. And and I guess probably the other thing, too, is, you know, besides a fungicide, insecticides, then also nematicides, right? And so, you know, there's products that are being used today on corn, soybeans, and other crops for, you know, nematode protection. And uh, so that's the other aspect of, okay, do I have nematode issues in my field, you know? And uh, if you do, then you probably need to make sure you take a look at what options I have as a seed treatment for nematodes. And, you know, there's been also nutritional products added to, to seed as a seed treatment. One common one, of course, is zinc on corn. That's, that's been a proven, you know, nutritional product on corn that, as a seedling that, that has shown to really help uh, yield enhancement. So, A couple of minutes ago, you mentioned biologicals, and that was something that I particularly wanted to talk a bit about because I, I feel like that's a really, really growth area in the industry as far as seed treatment goes. And I know there's a whole host of different things going on in that arena. I wondered if you could talk a, a little bit about, you know, what's going on in the biological arena. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, obviously besides our traditional synthetic products, we've got a full line of biological products. And that kind of fits under our BioST platform. So we have some products that are nematicides, insecticides, biostimulants, and uh, that, that can be added, you know, along with our synthetics. So you have really two modes of action to help with those, whether it's diseases or insects and so on. When you look at biologicals, I guess, and I agree, this is probably the most confusing part of the in the marketplace today as far as what growers are being called on every day about, hey, use this product, it, you know, it makes your plants bigger, bigger roots, and there's just a number of different products. But, you know, probably the, the easiest thing to do is boil it down and say, okay, in which bucket does this fit? And there's really three buckets, if you will, and one is the biostimulants, and, and then uh, biofertilizers, and then biopesticides. So, for example, in the biostimulant space, you know, those are products that probably will enhance your yield because they will enhance your root growth and, and uh, plant growth early on. They help with nutrient uptake and efficiency. They help in the abiotic stresses. So obviously, if you have a better root system uh, because of the biostimulant, that's going to help you get more water into the plant and nutrients and so on also. And there's a lot of these biostimulants are also a food source for the microbes. So you hear a lot about the rhizosphere uh, around the seed and the seedling and the plant. And, and so a lot of these products um, also help feed those microbes and help them be more active and, again, enhancing uh, your yield. And the other thing about biostimulants is that they can also help crop quality besides yield. Um, and you're hearing more about that, too, as far as, okay, great, I got yield, but there are some companies, especially some of the food companies, that are saying, hey, I want you know, better protein or I want this attribute, better oil, those kind of things. Some of these biostimulants can help also in the crop quality of, of uh, depending on the crop for those companies. And, you know, when you think about biostimulants, um, yeah, that's probably the most um, confusing space because it is a space going, well, okay, I've got this company that stopped by and said they've got, you know, amino acid peptides that will help with these things. I've got another company that came and said, hey, this is a seaweed product and it's going to do all these things. 
also microbial products, and they talk about the same attributes there too, saying, well, it'll do those same, same type of things. And I will say is that is true. There's a number of different products uh, in the biostimulant space, whether it's acids, microbials, extracts, and others, the proteins. And one, one thing I'll say about the biostimulants, if, you know, if you're not using a biostimulant, I would suggest that you do take a look at one and, and use one on your farm because they, they do work. So it's all about one that's easy to apply on seed, making sure you know, it's not sticky and all those kind of different things that affect plantability and so on. And in a lot of cases, like on soybeans, you can ask your, your seed dealer maybe to, you know, to apply them. And they may have some that they're using that they're already applying. So I would just say, you know, ask your seed dealer, say, what, what is this biostimulant? What's it doing for me? And understanding that, you know, what that can do for them as, uh, as a grower. And I assume that some of these things can be added on to existing seed treatment, or they may already be ingredients in a seed treatment package that may be offered. Is that fair? In the case of corn, talk to your corn supplier, seed dealer, and say, hey, what are the components that are on here as a seed treatment? And yeah, there is a number of companies that are already applying a biostimulant to the seed. So in that aspect, you probably don't need to add another one. Because a lot of times, once you get that yield bump or that enhancement, that early growth and so on, you know, by applying another one, you're probably not going to see it again, right? You're going to probably see that one response in the plant. Otherwise, yeah, obviously it could be applied afterwards um, if there isn't a, you know, a biostimulant applied. And of course, soybeans, wheat, other crops where it's applied with, with the seed dealer that's, you know, doing a lot of the seed treatment at their facility, of course, they can add those products um, there a lot much easier than, of course, with corn, where that's already been treated. So, sure, yeah. So you talked about another arena being the biopesticides area. Tell us about what that entails. You know, there's there's a couple different spaces there underneath biopesticides, and one is that there's biopesticides that are derived from biochemicals, and then there's biopesticides that are derived from microbial products, and just an example of some of the biochemical one is like Heads Up, for example. Heads Up is in the Stein XB Complete, and Heads Up actually is a protein, and that was actually derived as an extract from the quinoa seed. So it's very interesting that, you know, there's a product that will help for SDS, white mold, and, and again, it's not necessarily a fungicide. It's more of an SAR, so it's actually inducing that plant to resist the diseases. So it's kind of beefs up that plant, if you will. So that's an example of one of the different type of biochemicals uh, that are out there. As far as microbials, you know, another example there, and, and this goes back to when I was with a seed company, when I started out my career, I had the opportunity to launch uh, corn that had, of course, Bacillus thuringiensis Bt delivered through the corn, right? That's a, that's a biological, Bt. And so it's just a matter of the delivery mechanism in that case. In this case, the plant was delivering that. And so when you had the corn borer take a bite, it would control corn borer, right, and protect you from corn borer. So that's it, one of the examples maybe of one of the earlier ones um, that um, was, you know, incorporated as a microbial. So the other one is uh, bioST, nematicide, insecticide, and that's derived from the Burkhardera rhinogensis. And that's another bacteria and that is used to uh, make those products. And then another example is uh, Amplitude ST. Now that's a biofungicide that's EPA registered that we offer today also. And that comes from a Bacillus amylophaceans. So these are products that are actually EPA registered as you know insecticides, nematicides, fungicides, and where we can also incorporate in together with our synthetic products to again have multiple modes of action. And these products today are on millions of acres. So they're proven and uh, they work really well. In some other examples there, there's some fungi that, um, and viruses also that are being developed as uh, biopesticides also. Well, and that's an interesting point you brought up about, you know, one of the things we talk about a lot, probably more so in the weed control side, but it applies to, to seed treatment as well as multiple modes of action, right? Hitting whatever that is you're fighting, you need to hit it with more than one weapon. And so this biopesticide is interesting because like you said, you can combine it with, you know, maybe a synthetic and then you have these other, whether it's a microbe or a bacteria or even a natural extract 
that's doing the work uh, that you want it to do, and then you have you know multiple modes of action uh, against that uh, against that threat. I, that's really really cool. Yeah, and, and you know, and I think that's where uh, again, when a grower takes a look at what he's planting and uh, take a look at what's on the seed tag of you know of the products they're getting from their corn companies and so on, is that they may be surprised of the products and. Most companies now are probably using a biological as a seed treatment, and they may not even know that, right? So ask those questions, and and uh, I think they'll be surprised. Going, oh wow, I didn't realize I was using this biological. It's you know it comes with a seed, and kind of just take it for granted that you know it's treated, right? So, yeah. And don't really know uh, necessarily what's on the seed. So, so the last I think category you, you mentioned was uh, biofertilizers. So. Yeah, so biofertilizers, of course, uh, you know, the one you think of first is, you know, rhizobium on soybeans, right? So you want to inoculate your, your soybeans, and this has been done for many, many years. So this has already been used, the biofertilizer space. But now, of course, you're hearing about a lot of other biological products in the space. So that's really that biofertilizer space. And again, I would say, yeah, make sure you're taking a look at those because uh, that's some exciting technology and each one is a little bit different of, you know, how they work and, you know, and being delivered. And I would say that's one thing there is that with all these biologicals is understanding that, you know, you may have to apply it a little differently than your synthetics because, yeah, in some cases they are living products. You got to make sure that they're compatible and, and uh, getting them on the seed correctly and, and making sure they work for you. Uh, that's really critical. The other you know, pieces of the biofertilizer, of course, there are some products that help chelate some of the nutrients in the soil too. You know, there's some, you know, different bacilluses and pseudomonases that will help that, you know, make more phosphorus, you know, available example. So there's products like that in the market. Of course, the mobilizers, and I think you're probably hearing more and more about like mycorrhiza fungi. In that case, you know, mycorrhiza fungi really helps a lot with a lot of nutrients, but really uh, phosphorus is really one of the main ones that helps deliver into the plant and make more available to the plant. And of course, then there is some of the different plant extracts that are kind of fit in that uh, biofertilizer space also. Okay, cool. So we kind of touched on it here a little bit, but I guess after all that, my question would be for growers who are looking for their options for next year, I mean, what did farmers need to be taking into account and looking at when they're thinking about seed treatment? Yeah, so again, I think it goes back to that, you know, understanding, hey, you're out there combating the soybeans and, you know, it looks like you probably should have had 60 bushel soybeans the way it looked, but you're harvesting and it's, it's 40 bushel. Well, what happened, right? You're used to having 60 bushel and there's something there that reduced your yield. So what was that? You know, obviously, you know, the basics of fertilizer and just even, you know, moisture is a big piece of that, right? But, you know, was there other issues out there? And, of course, there are tools uh, for you to use to test for nematodes. Uh, there's even companies now testing for the different diseases in the soil. And uh, I think take a look at some of that to understand really kind of what your base point is. And, you know, they can tell you that, uh, yeah, you've got multiple fusarium you know, strains out there. And, you know, then again, okay, make sure you got a good fusarium package in that case. Or if it's nematodes, make sure you got a really good nematicide. So, and a lot of growers, of course, have consultants and so on that'll help, you know, help them with that decision making. And, and you know, of course, their trusted advisors, seed dealers, and everybody also, right, is that use them and ask them, you know, really determine what's going on in that field. Why did I lose that, let's say, 10 to 20 bushel that I should have had? Um, and hopefully they can find that. And probably even just getting to know, you know, again, what are the options in the seed treatment arena from their seed provider? Because like I said, not all seed treatments are created equal. So just understanding what those base products are and what each of those products does probably will help them understand how to how to decide. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, we always talk about, you know, it's about the active ingredient. It's not about the brand as far as, you know, understand what active ingredient is on the seed, as you say, and understanding what rates are being used. Because even though maybe that particular active ingredient's on the seed, 
what rate was being used and is that enough or could we enhance that rate? You know, maybe in the case of Phytophthora where, you know, you're using metalaxyl M and you could also increase that rate to help you with more Phytophthora protection. So that's a lot of what we look at is that it's really customization. You know, we can customize the C treatment based on what, you know, in this case, the Stein XP products, customize the products for what Stein is looking for to protect your yield. You know, you mentioned Stein XP, and I know you, Jay, and, and your company, Alba, have been instrumental helping us develop our line of XP seed treatments. So while I had you here, I was hoping you could kind of give us a little rundown of what our product line is and what the things are that we have to offer for 2023. Yeah, there's, um, yeah, so I work with your team and help develop, again, based on what your needs are and 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 really do that customization. So, uh, you know, there's four different ones that are offered in the XP line today. And, and of course, the really base one is just a straight fungicide. So, you know, that's, you know, being used where growers and seed dealers know that, hey, there really hasn't been much insect pressure in this area. So we can just use a straight fungicide package. So with that fungicide package, uh, we put together a package that will help with those big three, you know, the Pythium, Rhizoctonia, Fusarium and also has some Phytop for protection. And then as you go through the different products of, you know, the Stein XP F and I, of course, now this year, the insecticide portion will be thymothoxum. So that's a post-patent insecticide that's been proven and, um, you know, lower use rate. And, and of course, like on soybeans, that's really important uh, because there's only so much real estate on that seed. So if we can... Yeah. If we can uh, bring down those use rates more and still have the great protection, there's opportunity to maybe add some other products onto the seed then. And then there's also, of course, the Stein XP F&I with nematicide. And so in that case, that has the BioST nematicide. And uh, so that will protect growers if they have some nematode issues in their fields. So that's one of the other options. And I will say that nematicide also has an insecticide component to it. So... In this case, you're getting two modes of action of insecticide, nematicide, and a full fungicide package that protects you on the, on the major diseases. And, and the last one is the Stein XP Complete. And this one is the one that actually where we do have the, uh, the heads up product in there. We also have one of the fungicide components at a higher rate that'll help with SDS. So with the Stein XP Complete, you've got the complete protection, if you will. So you've got the base uh, big three diseases. You also have SDS. You have white mold protection. And so that product um, overall is, you know, brings more value. And again, it depends if you, in the area, if you have SDS. Of course, here in Iowa, that's a, that's a big deal. But as you go into North Dakota, not so much, right? So again, it all depends on the area and, and uh, what products are, are being used. And, and we're in discussion of, of course, visiting with your team about other potential products here in the future and uh, the products you're testing and looking at and uh, taking a look at what value they deliver. So, Jay, you know, you've been in the industry a long time. I think you've got a great pulse on what's happening in the seed treatment arena. I guess my, my question would be, you know, what's next in the seed treatment arena? Yeah, of course, um, when you, you know, we talked about all the different biologicals. Uh, you're going to see more and more products uh, come in that space, of course. Keep an eye on that. Understand what those products are because there's a lot of investment being done with a lot of venture capital in these, a lot of these biological companies. And a lot of that's some great science uh, that uh, is being developed. So take a look at that and understand some of those things. I think as far as maybe the big next thing on seed treatments, I believe is probably going to be this whole technology of the RNAi. And really what that is, is, you know, RNA interference. And I guess in simple terms, it's all about what it does is it dials down the production of the target, you know, protein within that pest. So it's very targeted. And so, for example, corn wetworm, you know, they, there's potential there then to actually help with corn wetworm, for example, or wireworms, or it can be a disease or a virus. So there's a lot of work and money being invested in that space. And that will be the next big thing, I believe, um, on top of the biological space. So keep an eye on that. Learn more about it. Understand maybe some of the companies that are you know, developing some of that technology. Uh, there's actually a company here in town that has 
the technology to actually put seed treatment on the go. Now, I don't believe this is going to replace the seed treatment you're putting on today as far as for covering the major issues. But what it's going to do is give that grower that option going, okay, um, you know, I know I've got the main disease covered on the seed treatment that I get from Stein. But again, here, you know, there's a a new biological, let's say that, uh, you know, for nitrogen, like that, that that's out there today. And maybe it's more of a higher use rate and it's more difficult to, you know, put on the seed at the, the seed dealer level. So that might be a product, for example, that could be applied on the go and you could put that on. Or it could be that, you know, understanding your field, there's maybe certain areas in the field that you know that that is prone for Phytophthora. And of course, typically that's in your lower areas, poorly drained part of your field. Well, in those areas, you could actually put on maybe another biological that's good on Phytophthora. So you could actually prescribe and, and put that on just in that area, for example, on top of already the seed treatment. So there's just a couple examples what I see uh, coming down the pike that uh, look pretty exciting and and uh, some opportunities uh, you know for growers. Well, I think one of the really neat things about this line of products is I know over the years we've had the opportunity to make some tweaks and some adjustments, and I think that is partly because of additional products that that you guys find. It's also based on the, what we see in the environments that we're selling seed in, and so it gives the opportunity to refine that. And uh, I think it's worked out really, really well. So. You know, based on your experience in, you've got a lot of experience in the seed treatment arena, and I guess my question would be, you know, what's something that you, at the end of the day, that you wish farmers fully understood about the business of seed treatments? Yeah, and I think it all goes back to that as far as, you know, understanding what's on the seed. Make sure and ask, you know, your seed dealer and what's being applied on the corn seed. You know, what are the options on soybeans that's being applied at the seed dealer level? And, and really understanding more about what's on there. And then also going back to what are the issues in that field that, or in his area that, that he may know that he has, like, for example, white mold. If it's an irrigated field and he has a history of white mold, he probably should have a product that's in there that'll help protect and reduce the incidence of white mold, for example. So I think it just goes back to understanding all these products and taking the time to do that and not just taking it for granted that, okay, my seed's treated, I'm covered, right? right. Um, not necessarily. Um, make sure, ask those questions and uh, understand that, you know, what products are being used to protect my yield. Yeah, because, you know, every field is unique and uh, not all treatments are created equal, I suppose. That's right. We've been visiting today with Jay Stroh of Alba about seed treatment trends and Stein's lineup of XP seed treatments. Jay, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. This has been enjoyable. Well, that's our time for today. I want to thank our guests and our listeners for joining us on another episode of the Stein Seedcast. We'll be back again soon with more expert interviews and insights about all things Stein. And to never miss an episode, subscribe to the Stein Seedcast wherever podcasts are found. Subscribe to the Stein Seedcast wherever podcasts are found. To learn more about Stein and its elite corn and soybean genetics, visit steinseed.com. Stein has yield.